Here's an overview of the cameras I'll be going over. Here we have a USB webcam. Here we have a radio analog camera, and this is the receiver for it. And then over here we have the ESP32 cam, which is very popular right now. And I'll be showing how to set up all of these and links for you can get these. So first I'll be going over the USB camera. Personally, I found this one in the faculty's trash near one of my classrooms. So you can really find them anywhere and they're cheap. They were popular during COVID when people had like online calls. And I'm sure if you play video games and you like to show your face, this is something you might have. The reason you might want to use one of these wired webcams is that because they're wired, they have a lot higher bandwidth, and that means they can get a lot more frames into the computer and just processed. So this would be really good if you're having to process videos such as image recognition or just hand tracking. And another good thing about these is the resolution doesn't suffer because of the added bandwidth. Something like a wireless communication, you will either drop frames or resolution just to get the same FPS that you can on a wired camera. So if you need high video quality and a lot of frames at a high speed, a wired webcam can benefit. And when I'm saying webcam, I also use the webcam on my laptop screen, so it's just like built into it. That is uh, virtually the same thing, just webcam has the added benefit of a cord and you'll be able to place it everywhere and you don't have to carry your laptop. The advantage about these is their cost, they're cheap, but they're also extremely simple to set up. It's really just plugging in and then you read the data from the serial port. So a good thing about these two is that if you have a Raspberry Pi, like this one right here, you can just plug it into it and then you can read the data from here and then you automatically have a camera feed. You don't have to get the Raspberry Pi camera along with just plugging into your laptop, just plug and play, read the data. And I'll be showing you a Python script on just how to read the data from a camera. Okay. As you can see, it's plugged in, the blue light's on, that means it's streaming. And we just have it plugged into the USB port. And then on here, we have the camera feed. Pretty swaggy. Now let's check out the code. So here I have a Python script that just takes in the port that the camera is plugged into. And then we'll display this on a OpenCV window so we can see the video feed. So we just run the Python script and then it will display video in this feed right here. Okay, so let's go on to this camera right here. I actually got this for an RC plane. What it is, is a little camera right here, it has a little cap on it. And what it does is it gets powered through here, and then it will display camera feed through radio waves. This is the receiver, this is the transmitter, it transmits a camera feed, and this receives it. So, the reason you might want to use one of these is, for example, like a drone that needs to go long range, or any really remote control thing. In addition to a plane, I also used it in a remote control car that delivered grilled cheese on my campus. So I could sit in my room and drive it around. I actually drove it around the dining hall a few times just to say hi to people. It's really fun. Honestly, this is my favorite camera. I just wish I had more reason to use it. It's not very good. You can't process much stuff on it. And the video quality is terrible. But that's what you get for a little camera that's wireless and all you have to do is power it. I can't say I recommend doing it this way, but this is how I have it set up for the meantime. It's a 7.4 volt LiPo battery directly plugged into here, and it'll just power this camera. And then over here, I have the receiver. It's plugged into my laptop, and then I have OBS Studio open. And from there, I can process the video feed from there and show it on the screen. So this is actually how I drove around the robot in the dining hall or viewed the plane while it was flying. I just mounted this straight to the robot. And then from there, I could get a live camera feed. This thing's pretty cool. Like I said, super fun, but look at this camera quality. All right, not too good. The little bit of uh, fish eye lens. And let's go inside this camera. Okay, wow. So if you ever see those cool videos of people flying around drones and have this perfect camera feed and all of that, that's not actually how they see it through the goggles. They usually see it in the camera feed I just showed you, and then there's a secondary camera on there recording in like beautiful um, HD video or 4K video, and they're really just looking through here. Because this is the best way to transfer camera um, live feed over long distances, and really just get it to you in a reliable, quick way. Okay, I know I said the last camera was my favorite, but ESP32 camera is my actual favorite. This thing is the best. It's a Wi-Fi connected um, microcontroller that also has a camera connected to it. Um, I'll show you how it comes when I order it in the mail. So when I got this thing, it came with all these parts. Right here is the camera, and you can see it goes into this little port right there. Then over here is just a little board so you can program it and really just read the serial communication from it. Other than that, you have to do a kind of a funky process to get that working. 
Let's look at the camera again. You can see that there's a little SD card slot. So if you just want to take pictures with it or store more pictures or video on there, you can do that. And then on the back, you can see this little shield that is similar to, let's grab this, the ESP32 because that's is an ESP32 under that shield right there. You can see in the glint. And this camera is awesome. I love it. And you notice there's a second antenna. This antenna is, allows you to connect to Wi-Fi at a longer distance. On the board, you can see this little squiggle right here. That is actually an antenna, but it's not as good as this one right here. And there's a little port right there that goes into, you can see right there. To do that, above that, there's a tiny resistor and then you can move that over to actually use the um, external antenna. I haven't done that because the one integrated into the PCB board is perfectly fine for my applications. So let's get on on how to use this and program it. So here we are in the Arduino IDE. This is the software used to program a just microcontroller, but this can also be used to program ESP32. To do that, we actually go into the board manager and we can download the ESP32 boards. This will allow us to actually program the ESP32. Without these, we can't program it. We can only do the Arduino. So here it just says update because I already have it installed, but for you, it'll say install. And then from here, we can then go to the examples. And after reloading the Arduino IDE, we can then see this ESP32 in the example. From there, we can find camera and then camera web server. So this will open a sketch. Um, it'll be multiple files, but we only really have to change a few lines of code and this will allow us to start streaming video onto a web server that we can then access from anything on our network. So as you can see, the module I'm using is an AI thinker, so I uncomment this line right here. And this will allow us to start using the AI thinker. So then I enter my Wi-Fi credentials, which is not actually what I'm entering, but um, you enter, say, your home Wi-Fi address along with your password. So this allows it to connect to Wi-Fi and then start streaming the information onto um, a web server that you can then access from either your laptop or your phone as long as you're connected to the same network. So from here, we then check the port just to make sure that we are connected to the ESP32. So here, we are setting up the board and the port that it'll be connected to. Because I am using the um, AI Thinker, I will search for ESP32 AI Thinker and select that and the port is on the right. We can then upload the code to the ESP32. This will take a few minutes and make sure you don't have any other Arduino IDE serial monitors open or this will give you an error because they are both trying to read and write from the same cable and it'll just give you some sort of error. So make sure you're also with that. And let me just speed this up. So here we are, we're finishing the uploading and it is done. So then we open the serial monitor, which is just the top right, that little magnifying glass. And then we can press the restart button on the ESP32 cam. This will then give us a few dots and this is it connecting the Wi-Fi. And then it'll give us a little link. We can open this in a web browser and then we can start the stream. So from here, we can see us. Hey, that's me. Hi there. Uh, <laughs> and we can play with the settings. And by playing with the settings, we can just do a bunch of different stuff. There's LED intensity. I believe that's the flash, but for some reason mine's not working. Or maybe I'm just um, utterly wrong, but both of those are possibilities. Yeah, so I'm testing that out. And we have all these cool things like face detection and we can mess with the settings on the camera, such as the contrast and just uh, do some camera tests and just messing around really. We can start and stop the stream like that. And this is all being done over Wi-Fi. And then we have all these qualities things. By changing the quality of the video, this will change the FPS because of the amount of data that is gonna be transmitted over Wi-Fi. So as you can see here, I have a high quality video, but low FPS. This is because the higher quality takes longer to transmit over the Wi-Fi and just receive. And then here, I made a lower FPS because I decreased the quality of the video. As you can see, it's a lot smoother. So just take this into account. If you need something that is more live, you can 
um, decrease the FPS. If you need something that's live, you can um, decrease the resolution. And if you need something that has higher resolution, it will cost you some FPS. And then we have some filters here. Um, these are just to play around, but if you're using anything with vision, these filters are going to be very handy for you. It's awesome. You can connect it to any other devices, such as like screens and motors and all that. And it really does the same thing as this ESP32, but it has lesser pins and it's a little bit more finicky to work with. But from that, I believe you guys can make some really cool projects with it. Um, I plan to be using it in the future from just face detection and really just stuff in general. Let me know what you guys think about this, if there's any questions about how I set this up or how I can really uh, just improve an explanation in general. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys' comments. Um, here are a few of them that I've really enjoyed. And thank you for a thousand subscribers, everyone. Um, I didn't think I'd hit this. It was really just, I made this channel just so I could um, keep myself on top of projects and really just show people what I did. But I didn't expect it actually to get to a thousand. And I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, Thank you so much. Let me know what I should do next. I was thinking maybe a screen video where I show off a bunch of different screens and how you can use them. But whatever you guys want, I'll make. Also, another thing, if you have been following my love letter project that uh, sends some shambles right now, but it actually just got accepted from Kickstarter and now I'm in the pre-launch phase and I'll be running some Facebook ads. So stay tuned on that. I'll be probably posting some shorts and I love it. Thank you guys.